Welcome to Superhero Stuff You Should Know. I am, once again, the Bat, Ben Juan, and with me are, in his Miyagi-Do shirt... And Druvius Odysseus, and it's not written, but the third... <laughs> I knew you were going to throw that in at some point. We have <laughs> some jackass named Rodney. <laughs> Rodney Rocket. <laughs> you guys didn't know I existed, did you? I'm uh, Roxy Rocket's uh, lesser-known brother. Less Sounds infamous. like your porn name. It does sound like a porn name, doesn't it? it does Rodney actually, Rodney. Yeah. <laughs> You can find me on the latest episode of uh, that fucking guy. What's his name from the James Gunn movie with the toilet on his head? Oh, uh, Peacemaker. Peacemaker. Yeah, you can find me okay. on the latest episode of Peacemaker. The toilet Rodney on Rocket. his head. Yeah. <laughs> the toilet on toilet his head. head. <laughs> <laughs> the whisper, this is like a whisper of days on that side of that thing. <laughs> it might, maybe, yeah. On Peacemaker, I shop it on there. <laughs> if he doesn't have a, he doesn't have a chance to take a shower that day. He just uses the whisper of a day on his face and everything else. Yeah, there you go. Well, this is a bit of a break from what we've been doing, but something a little more friendly for our podcast only audio listeners. It's one of the first time in a long time we're covering an unmade TV episode. Uh, I think the last time we did this was when. Way before we even met Zach, and Andrew and I covered the unmade Two Face episodes of 1966 Batman. What about Way that one with that banana? There was whole some old plot point oh, about yeah, a this banana. Is the Bruce Wayne, yeah, the Bruce Wayne pilot, which was even before that. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. we don't often. <laughs> we cover, took a sh- big uh, shit on that, that one. <laughs> I'm not sure <laughs> we're talking about the thing we made up with Bibbo and Beppo. Who no, <laughs> that was, no, this is going way back in the, <laughs> in the archives. Banana? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some Bruce Wayne show where they had a whole section about a banana or some shit. Oh. Bruce Wayne eats a banana, leaves <laughs> it on the floor. Oh, we don't know. He eats a banana and then he knocks out a criminal and they're like, you can't like give away your secret identity. And he's like, I got an idea. And he, so he leaves the banana peel to make it look like the criminal slipped. And then I... Gordon's like, I don't buy this when he comes across <laughs> the criminal. I think so, I remember re, uh, listening to that episode yeah. actually now. <laughs> so check out our Bruce Wayne episode uh, on that. But we're going, we're covering a different uh, Batman origin. <laughs> it's like they were playing a lot of Mario Kart at that time or something. <laughs> yes. So we're covering actually the unmade Batman animated series episode on the origin of the Kevin Conroy DCAU Batman. This is a lesser known Ooh. unmade project. This episode does not exist as a script. Uh, or a teleplay, it exists only as a script treatment. And it is not done by the usual suspects you would think. This is not Paul Dini, this is not Alan Burnett writing. This is another writer. Before Matt Reeves, there was Michael Reeves. So let's talk about Michael Reeves, the writer of this episode. Uh, there's the cat cameo for Rodney Yes, Rocket. oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Reeves is a writer for animation. In the 90s, he wrote for Gargoyles, one of our childhood Oh, favorites. cool. Yeah. Nice. As well as Batman the Animated Series, the you know number one childhood favorite. But mm-hmm. the episodes with his name on them, either for the teleplays or for the story credits, include Pretty Poison, the first Poison Ivy episode. Feet of Clay, the Clayface episodes. The first one? Yep. Oh, well, the this origin. guy's a genius. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't the only one on these. Absolute S-tier did, writer did, of yeah. the page. Yeah. The stage and screen right here. I believe Feet of Clay Part 2 is the one that he wrote the teleplay for. Teleplay 4, which has that ending uh, as well, that Mm -hmm. uh, I know that we appreciate. Uh, Please tell me he's still alive. He is. He is. Unfortunately, he has Parkinson's and is unable to speak coherently, according to himself uh, on his blog. But he does have have help in order to continue writing, so that's awesome. Um, He also did Perchance to Dream, which is the one where he he has uh, the whole Mad Hatter hallucination where he's like not Batman anymore and how it's Mm. so much happier. Uh, I Am the Knight, which is one of my favorites, where mm-hmm. Gordon gets shot and, and Batman is sort of having his existential crisis. But of course, he also is one of the writers credited on Mask of the Phantasm, which, as of today, Robert Pattinson has been on the news this week for saying that he felt like Mask of the Phantasm and the upcoming The Batman have a similar take on the character, feeling like Bruce Wayne has chosen this uh, or was chosen for this burden of being Batman. So, <sighs> Dude, you just can't make me look forward to this even more. <laughs> I'm going to fucking explode. <laughs> I fucking can't take it much longer. <laughs> Stay with us until March 4th, please. Did you, like the, did you like the music? We hadn't talked about that. Yeah, it's fucking great, of course. Yeah. You can hum it and shit. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Michael Giacchino. Giacchino. Yeah. So, I uh, say his name. 
Reeves, uh, Michael Reeves, writer Michael Reeves, at one point wrote an unmade episode treatment for an episode titled Vigil, which seems like it was done sometime after 1993. It does reference Mask of the Phantasm. It does have some tie-ins with Mask of the Phantasm, actually, and it does seem to have taken place before the redesigned seasons on Kids WB. So it is similar to Mask of the Phantasm and Robin's Reckoning and some, yeah, that type of style where it's like there's a present-day story that just sets up the flashbacks to tell the origin on this. So we kind of have a mix of a present-day story and a past story. And it's all on Michael Reeves' website, or was on his website, until it was shut down. However, thanks to the Wayback Machine, we have access <laughs> to uh, this treatment that was on his website. So I don't know why it's no longer up there, but it is still technically up there if you use the Wayback Machine. And we will have a link to that script treatment for you guys to read for yourselves in the show notes. Wait, so, does the Wayback Machine catalog, catalog the whole fucking internet? Like, what's the Wayback might, Machine? Am I showing my I ignorance so. here? Uh, yeah, yeah, it, you're able to like look back at sites that used to exist or used to be online. That's the way back machine. Yeah, so so all the Geo cities from the '90s are on there. You could probably check them out. Yeah, <laughs> oh, man. you know the Captain Marvel. This is a quick tangent, but the Captain Marvel webpage is like the Geo cities '90s style. Oh, really? Because it's set in the '90s. Yeah, it's fun. That's, that's actually really cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So let's dive into the episode, but first, let's imagine. The opening credits through our storyboards. So the oh, WV logo yeah. goes on. The lights of the police blimp shine down to a bank where criminals shift their eyes and then blow up the entrance. The Batmobile for the Batcave starts up and heads out. The criminals run up to the rooftop only to find Batman, his eyes narrow, and he starts fighting them off to the Danny Elfman theme. Eventually, the criminals are tied up and found by the police and up on a higher building. Batman stands dramatically in front of the lightning sky as the Batman theme closes enter the episode beautiful so there's some extra storyboard and concept art for stuff that did not make it in the previous episode because i wanted to save it for some of this stuff so i will be sort of for the visual uh sort of viewers we you guys are going to see some of the concept art that didn't make it in in general to uh, last week's episode that sort of tied into this one so we begin with alfred in wayne manor in present day and he's talking on the phone actually with dr leslie tompkins uh, which is interesting. Leslie Tompkins did show up in a few episodes of the animated series, mm -hmm. specifically Appointment in Crime Alley and I Am the Night. Uh, and she is established in the comics as well as in the TV show as the woman who was there the night that Bruce Wayne's parents were murdered and comforted him. Uh, her role in doing that has kind of been replaced by Jim Gordon uh, post Batman <laughs> Begins. But, um, yeah. you know, she was, she fulfilled that role in the beginning. And her she never really, I don't really remember her having much interaction with Alfred at all in the DCAU. I was kind that? of, I actually got her mixed up with that other random lady that he went to the Poison Ivy Spa with. Yeah. Was that he Eternal Youth? Her. Yeah. Yeah. At yeah, first, in my in my memory, I was thinking that was Leslie Tompkins, but yeah, that was just some rando yeah. that uh, Alfred had on the side. <laughs> some rando. Some side piece. Alfred. Yeah. I was, yeah. Thinking, I was thinking, did they ever hook up? <laughs> That's they're about it the same like age, Alfred right? Alfred and Leslie should hook up, I think. Yeah, 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 there is a romance in the comics, but it doesn't seem oh, okay. like there is that in the animated series, and it doesn't seem like there's hints of that in the episode that Matt hmm. Reeves, I mean, not Reeves, Matt Reeves, Michael Reeves wrote on this. Uh, so Leslie did Alfred's latest physical exam uh, for real, professionally, not like. <laughs> That's not a euphemism for anything. I know we just said that he should be in a relationship. Um, but she did do his latest physical exam, and she brings up that while Alfred seems healthy and fit, he seems also emotionally run down. And so the she best prostate I've seen from a, he, ma a young man your age. He's got more than a stiff upper lip. <laughs> That's a, this drawing at the fucking middle left here. The yeah. bottom. <laughs> 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 Madam, would you desist? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Leslie offers that she recently won a trip to Barbados, but she can't go. So she asks Alfred, would you like to go in my stead? And so Alfred is very tempted to take a vacation. The guy probably <laughs> deserves it, if you think about it. <laughs> um, Alfred says that he's <laughs> he not, he doesn't he's, feel like he's very important <laughs> around Wayne Manor anymore outside of cleaning. Because, you know, Bruce is off doing stuff and, you know, he's kind of just doing the Batman thing. But Leslie, you know, brings up, like, nonsense. You're an important part of Bruce's operation. So I guess we sort of start off with Alfred kind of wanting a vacation, kind of wanting a break, 
from doing all this type of stuff and, and you know, pouring tea and doing fancy tricks like we're seeing here or doing random karate chop moves. Yeah. <laughs> you see in this other image here. He's doing Cobra, Cobra Kai here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cobra Kai Alfred. Strike first, Master Bruce. <laughs> he was Kreese's teacher, bro. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but Kreese became, you know, it was like, it was, yeah. went to the dark side on his own. Leave Not us Alfred's if fault. You, if you want a Cobra Kai karate kid to die. <laughs> Look, Ben and I are dying to talk about it. <laughs> we just can't wait. <laughs> All right, so, so back to this. We're, we've set up Alfred's uh, situation here. He could use a vacation, and he's going to want one even more because in the Batcave, the Batmobile drives in and is barely able to stay on the road. And Alfred's like, oh, my God, he's drunk. No, he's not drunk, but he's <laughs> clearly... He's clearly not well because the Batmobile crashes against the wall and Alfred runs to it knowing something's wrong and he, you know, the Batmobile opens and a sick Batman steps out or is dragged out by Alfred and he only says one word, poison. Batman's oh. been poisoned. Nice, so, nice. Alfred brings the poisoned Batman to the sick bay and tells Leslie, you know, what's going on. Bruce is back. He's been poisoned. Leslie wants to help, but she doesn't know what antidote to recommend to Alfred unless she actually examines him. So she's going to have to have Robin pick her up and take her to the Batcave in order to operate. But in the meantime, she tells Alfred to keep him conscious, saying, quote, don't let him pass out. If he does, he'll never wake up. So this is the vigil of the episode, is mm. Alfred standing over Bruce and trying to keep him alive. While, of course, his way to keep him conscious the whole time is to sort of recap his career, to recap the origin of why he became the, the Batman in order to sort of keep him alive through just sheer determination to keep him awake so uh already we can tell this is not the uh this is not along the lines of i've got batman in my basement type of tone this is very <laughs> much like the robin's reckoning tone yeah the same tone as phantasm i am the knight like that very like serious episode yeah. type of thing. so uh alfred basically takes batman's mask off and so it's just bruce on the table and bruce tells alfred it's time for dick to take over as batman because Bruce thinks that he's going to die from this. And it's a hell of a setup so far. I know, right? This, this is, is just the opening. hell of a first act. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Um, and Alfred, you know, brings up that he's been through worse, and he's like, "Remember, you made a vow." And then that takes us to a flashback to Crime Alley to see the Waynes get killed again. Okay, no, we're not going to see that. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, it's I hope kids not. television. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, was not seen or made fun of as much in the '90s. For That's having true. Been overdone. It That's is now. True. So, yeah, don't worry. We don't get to see the Waynes killed again, but we do get to see the aftermath in Crime Alley as the police investigate the crime scene there, and young Bruce is in the arms of young Leslie Tompkins, as shown in the newspaper in uh, Appointment in Crime Alley, the episode Appointment in Crime Alley. Alfred is there as well to take care of the boy, and it says, quote, we see the boy look up, eyes now dry of tears, his grief replaced by a look of determination, somehow unsettling, and one so young. Great description by Reeves there. So... Uh, we flash forward a little bit to Wayne Manor where young Alfred and Leslie are with the young Bruce and Alfred's narration brings up that he and Leslie cared for Bruce while the lawyers sort of sorted out the Wayne estate and what was going to happen <clears throat> considering that the heir was like 10 years old at the time. So Alfred and Leslie, just like in the post-crisis comics, comics or so, uh, sort of served as a surrogate father and mother figure to Bruce during the time of grief. And Leslie tries to comfort Bruce saying that he has to believe that at some point the hurt will go away. You know, at some point, the pain will, will leave you. But as they leave, it says, quote, the boy lies alone in bed, staring up at the darkness, clenching a small white-knuckled fist and whispering, I won't let it go. <laughs> it's not quite the full-on vow scene that we got to see mm -hmm. in this image from Chill of the Night, where Brave and the Bold, Chill of the Night, where he literally just does the vow. But it's as close as you, you're going to get in this version. That's cool, though. I mean, yeah. it's yeah, it's fine. I think that's yeah. a good, good little change. Yeah, yeah, very subtle version of that. Mm -hmm. So uh, we cut to years later when Bruce is twelve, and Alfred attempts to get Bruce to come out of his room to play catch, but Bruce never answers because he's too busy studying his books with the titles "Fundamentals of Criminal Psychopathology" and "Introduction to Law Enforcement." So he's already on the path to training. Look at uh, he almost seems fingers. obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're looking at a comic panel here of Bruce just looking like a madman, just reading a book. Uh, oh, those man. little chubby little fingers up there, too. <laughs> yes. Uh, we then see teenage Bruce working out with, quote, grim intensity doing kips, press-ups, etc. on the parallel bars, 
vaulting from there to a rope, which he climbs using only his hands. The Alfred. salmon ladder, dude. This is where <laughs> Berlanti got it. Using only his feet. That's what I was thinking. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Alfred narrates the quote, there is a quote by your favorite philosopher which you made your motto at an early age. That which does not destroy me makes me stronger. The philosopher he's referring to, of course, is uh, Nietzsche, as I looked up. So uh, Alfred is witnessing the transformation. He's witnessing the training. And it also says that Alfred teaches Bruce how to fence in this which oh that's cool nice. see we were just talking about this in the patreon yeah, yeah yeah so for those who are part of the patreon you guys got sort of a deeper dive into just alfred specifically and the evolution of alfred being kind of a badass or somebody who's able to fight and so this sort of adds another element into that of like alfred taught some sort of fight training to bruce and this alfred as we talked about in the patreon has a background as being a british spy as shown in the line and the unicorn episode so uh, he does kind of have something, uh, some sort of skill in order to pass on to Bruce that he'll use as Batman. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so during this flashback, uh, Alfred is sort of talking to him about this. And in present day uh, in downtown, Robin arrives to pick up Leslie at the clinic using the Bat Cycle. And as they head towards the Bat Cave, uh, you know, he's got her on the back of the motorcycle. It says, quote, a car full of gangsters shoot up a pursuing police car, careens around a corner, heading straight for them. It looks like a collision is inevitable as we fade out. End Act 1. So Give, that's the first commercial okay, break. Yeah. Forgive my noobness once again, but Leslie Tompkins is in the know? He no, yeah, she okay. knows yeah, yeah. you? It, it, it depends on which different continuities, but in this okay. specific version, she does know that Bruce is Batman. It's, okay. I don't think it's... It's pretty much... Uh, very strongly implied, at least from what I remember. I don't remember her dr- addressing him directly as Bruce in the animated series, but like, you've got she knows that he's there to honor the deaths of the Waynes and that type of stuff in the show. You know, when he shows up in Crime Alley to lay the flowers yeah. on in Crime Alley and that stuff. So uh, that's kind of yeah, that's pretty much established uh, on there that she seems to know who he is. So here it's it's just flat out says. Yeah, Leslie does know Bruce Wayne is Batman. She knows Dick is Robin, and she's there to help out. And knows, you know, Alfred's part of it on this. Okay, so, cool. And one other yeah. thing, is it pretty? It's pretty much canon that his favorite philosopher is Nietzsche. Um, I don't know. I don't, from... but it does. It does seem that he's quoted a lot in that. You know, the okay. whole idea of, of like looking into the abyss and the, lo- the abyss looks back at mm-hmm. you, that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, Kevin Conroy when he did his live action debut in the Crisis on Infinite Earths scene, he quotes uh, Nietzsche's the whole, like, battle not with monsters, lest you become a monster. So, like, that's... it's If anything, it's the most pervasive in Vitez. It's the most pervasive in Conroy's interpretation than it is in in other stuff. Seems very dark and Batman-y. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. (laughs) For sure. But, uh, yeah, that's a good question. There is... I don't know if there's enough for its own separate episode on on Batman and, and... you know, philosophy with Nietzsche specifically, but I don't know. I love these I'll connections, though. Look like, into that. Like, yeah. in Superman episodes, like, we cu- he, like, in Man of Steel, he's holding, like, a Plato book, I think, when he, it's a flashback when he was a kid, mm-hmm. young Clark, and then uh, there's, like, what did we talk about? Kant or something? Kant? And, yeah, uh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's just, there's these, the people try to, you know, put these, you know, philosophy, you know, philosophers philosophies into these kind of things so mm-hmm. i find that yeah. stuff kind of interesting when they do it yeah yeah so we're at the act break you know the first commercial break and the next time we do flashbacks it's going to be stuff that happened after all his training so i thought we might as well kind of do you know take a quick tangent into a little bit of the timeline of the career of the kevin conroy batman in terms of like what other training did he get outside of alfred with the fencing and him just working out and obsessively reading books like a psychopath, like we saw in that one on the panel. So, <laughs> his grubby mitts. <laughs> his grubby little chubby paws. So uh, we know that some of the training that he did around the world was uh, in escape artistry with Zatara, as we saw in the episode in Zatanna. We saw uh, a flashback of that where he learned that from the great Zatara and uh, also sort of had a flirtation with his daughter and future superheroine Zatanna. So... We got that. We also know he went to Japan to learn martial arts from Sensei Yoru uh, and encountered the rival Kyodai Ken in some of our favorite episodes as well. He's giving his love handles a pinch there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> gotcha! Why'd you get me where it hurts, Bruce? 
I've grabbed your kidney. <laughs> and then there's another element that is actually added in, not in the in BTAS, but in Justice League Unlimited. They revealed that Bruce learned martial arts as well in non, Nanda Parbat from the master there. So that's from the episode Dead Reckoning. Mm. So he learns all this around the world and then comes back to Gotham and, as shown in Mask of the Phantasm, attempts to fight crime wearing a ski mask, but finds the problem is criminals are not afraid of him. It's kind of like year one, except without him dressing up as Travis Bickle and fighting mm. prostitutes and pimps in the East End, because he <laughs> probably couldn't do that in an animated movie in 1993. So uh, instead, we got the ski mask vigilante type stuff. And then he fell in love with uh, Andrea Beaumont, who was basically the last temptation of a normal life before she had to leave him due to her father getting embroiled with all the gangsters and, and Jack Napier and stuff. So with Andrea out of his life, Bruce went back to his original plan and became Batman and... We know the rest is history from the show. She's so. looking right at his chin. She doesn't. That's I'm what. Sorry, that's the whole reason why I she got distracted him. by that. that the chin. line of sight of her head is like right at his chin. <laughs> She's distracted by it the whole time. That's why she left him. Usually the eye yeah. lines off in live action, but uh, not too good on this pa- this panel here. She's Honestly, like, I've Dan, seen this chin this before. Shot. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe she's would, like they're looking up and then she was looking down yeah it's probably like a motion thing but it didn't yeah. make me laugh <laughs> i don't understand where this comes from but, uh, i was thinking too ben what uh i know we're talking about bruce's career timeline wise are you gonna yep. i don't know if you get into this i wonder at what point did um jack napier become the joker in this universe because we do see that at this point in time, when Bruce is just starting out, Jack Napier is normal. Um, see, I, w- I always wonder about that. We I never would say see like his pretty origin quickly. Like I, I would think, you know, Jack is involved with the Velestra mob for a bit, um, and then, you know, he does catch up to the Beaumonts and kills mm-hmm. her dad in the flashback. So I would think after that he comes to Gotham. We're still somewhere, you know, maybe a month or two into Bruce's year one as Batman, and then we have the whole Ace Chemicals thing. Yeah, because this version of Joker never uh, is like Red Hood or anything like that. I know there's like a brief flashback in... Um, Mad Beware, Love. What, yeah, Beware the Creeper in Mad Beware Love. the Creeper yeah, where we, does like a dramatization of just like, we have actors that's right. trying to do yeah. what happened, yeah. Yeah, and there's like kind of a flashback in Mad Love through uh, Harley's like little montage there when she's talking about it, but yeah, obviously mm-hmm. he's just like a normal criminal in like a uh, fedora and a trench coat then so yeah yeah they were doing the, that, yeah. the jack nicholson thing the jack napier mm-hmm. thing because the the 89 movie so that's one of the influences of the burton films coming on to this so uh that does lead me into one other thing that i'm curious to get your guys's opinion on i feel like you know mass of the phantasm has always sort of had this reputation online as one of you know this is the greatest batman movie and all that stuff but i've been starting to see some like very delayed backlash or uh, maybe this is stuff, stuff that people had always felt but never felt emboldened to say online before but they feel like they don't like mask of the phantasm's origin because quote unquote bruce becomes batman because of a girl or because of a breakup mm, type of thing interesting <clears throat> and they don't really like that and and i'm just like okay if you want to oversimplify it then okay you could say that but to me it's pretty clear like if we look at the timeline he's already done his training he's already suiting up in the ski mask he's on his way to become batman this is she's not the necessarily the reason he becomes batman she's sort of the last temptation of a normal life as i described before he becomes batman mm-hmm. and so maybe if this was a thing where like she was his middle school or high school sweetheart and then she broke his heart and then he went on training then it would seem that way but i think it's pretty clear from comprehending the movie that he was on the path anyway and he was going to become batman and this temptation once that was away, he went back to his original plan. Not that he started to have a plan once uh, she left him. So that's my take hmm. on that. I don't know if you guys have heard that before on this. Sounds like a bunch of smooth brain talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> think, I don't know. I've never heard anybody say a negative <clears throat> word about it. I'm, I'm kind of surprised. I never yeah. think about it that way when I watch it. Like, well, yeah. can't get my girl, so I'm just going to go ahead and be a Batman. Yeah, I just don't. I don't think about I get it. Like it if that. there was like kind of there was no 
Yeah, exactly. Like, if there was no death of the weight, it was literally just, you broke up with me, and so I decided to fight crime. I'm like, okay, that would be weird yeah. to have no death of the Waynes and do that, but it's very clear for the movie what's going on. So, uh, I don't know. Smooth brains, as Zach said. <laughs> Bunch of smooth brains over there. <laughs> on the internet, on Twitter. Yes. You mainly saw that on Twitter, yeah. right? Um, no, I've seen it in, like, different areas. I've seen that in on, like, different Facebook groups and I forgot where else well, it would, would have been. Well, Maybe fuck Reddit, them. I don't know. <laughs> they've grown. They've grown too bold. I think. Yeah. 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 <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. So let's continue then too, back too into the bold. script of Vigil. So <laughs> we kind of know where we are. You know where we're at timeline wise. So Bruce in the flashbacks will have already been doing all the training of Kyoto Ken and grabbing his love handle, as Zach was talking about. <laughs> so let's go into what happens in present day. So. Uh, Robin and Leslie have been getting caught and almost getting into a collision with gangsters. It says the car swerves, seeking to avoid the cycle, and Robin veers as well. The car goes up on two wheels, and Robin and Leslie pass under the tilted car's undercarriage and narrowly avoid the police car giving chase. The gangster's car collides with a lamppost, and looking back over her shoulder, Leslie sees the cops surround the gangsters. So basically, Robin kind of did some maneuvering in order to allow the cops to catch up with the gangsters and be able to safely get away with Leslie and all's well that ends well. So anyway, they're out of sight, zooming down the dark streets towards the city's outskirts and Wayne Manor. So uh, back at the cave, Alfred brings up to the poison Bruce that Dick Grayson is too young to take on the mantle of the bat. But Bruce says that he was around Dick's age when he started, and we get a flashback, another flashback to Alfred, looking at the newspaper, talking about the ski mask vigilante. But this is not the same article as Mask of the Phantasm. It says that the ski mask vigilantes tried to stop a holdup but the crooks got away. It also says that Alfred is reading it not when Bruce is in the park trying to do what he claims to be jujitsu, even though it looks a lot closer to karate or taekwondo. But uh, just name some martial art. <laughs> no one will give a fuck. <laughs> I feel like, at this time, especially, I, I feel like nobody cared. But now with like MMA and fucking like all kind, like people also are the like, internet. <laughs> yeah, the internet, everything. Like people are yes. kind of more in the know than they used to be. Yeah, yeah. But that kind of stuff. Somebody pointed out, like, the, the takedown that Andrea does to him in this flashback is actually jujitsu, is real jujitsu. <laughs> okay, <laughs> what he's trying yeah. to do. Yeah. He's basically doing kata in the, uh, in the park. <laughs> in this. Oh, so, yeah, there's no kata in jujitsu, probably. Well, yeah. I could be wrong. Let well, me know in the comments. Yeah, yeah. But what he's doing seem, is, doesn't seem to be jujitsu, even mm-hmm. though he claims that it is. So, what Bruce is doing in, in this script, as Alfred's reading about this street, you know, ski mask vigilante who stopped a holdup is that Bruce is quote unquote smashing a Makawara dummy with edge hand blows. So this implies yeah. that, uh, as I said, it not only implies that there's a different separate ski mask vigilante experience, uh, but also implies that Bruce was not always successful in apprehending criminals, even with the ski mask on. Um, <laughs> the visual word looking at is Val Kilmer with the same type of dummy from the deleted scene in Batman forever, as we discussed in our $10 Patreon show. So check that out if you haven't already. Though the deleted scene, as we've pointed out, shows a complete misunderstanding of how the dummy's used, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> they didn't. Uh, they get all this Crystal money. Donnie they don't hire a as... fucking guy that knows how to use this <laughs> to train Val Kilmer. Punching back. And I'm like, mm, no. Oh, yeah. It's not like spinning, right? It should spin. Yeah, well, he's not even like. He's using it just to. Ju- he's just doing this to it. Like, yeah. Oh, Chris oh, O'Donnell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like. Yeah. New, he taped up like a newspaper clipping of. Two faces picture on there, and he's punching it. I feel like Bruce should have been like, "You might want to use the heavy bag for that." <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then and then Kilmer's kicking this with, you know, clearly could have done another take on the, um, on the kick there, but whatever. Anyway. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, the uh, yeah. So we've <laughs> we we see Bruce training, and we don't really get to see a flashback of Andrea Beaumont. She's not really addressed in this episode at all really so i guess maybe they're just like you know you have to check out mask of a phantasm to get the full story but it does say that alfred acknowledges that bruce lacked the fear to strike in the criminal heart and then it cuts to a shot of bats coming out of a crevice and alfred narrates quote and then you found your destiny and your curse and then the only what it seems reused scene for mask of the phantasm is this classic moment that i have the storyboards for here where alfred hands him the mask. Bat Bruce looks at the cow, dons it for the first time, then turns to Alfred, who then has the shocked expression on his face. So that was actually going to be repeated 
in this episode. However, we would have continued the scene after this happens. So it's in, in Mask of the Phantasm, Batman just walks off and presumably, you know, goes off and goes into his first night out, right? In this one, we continue as Alfred follows Bruce down into the Batcave. So he goes down further and further and further into the cave. And uh, we're looking now at some concept art of the BTS Batcave uh, that got saved for this episode. This comes from Batman The Complete History by Les Daniels. And the Batcave here shows... By time. Andrew Farrago. Well, no. not, yeah, not that one. <laughs> not him again. <laughs> <laughs> the Batcave here shows a tiny version of the Batmobile. We've got sort of this carport area here uh, for that. And I know last time I said there's not really a lot of concept art for the Batmobile outside of the one that we saw in the show. But we do see, when I zoom in, kind of a 66-inspired Batmobile done for the concept art. Oh, again, yeah. this is... This is mainly for the Batcave, so I don't think they seriously oh, yeah. considered the 66 Batmobile, but it is kind of cool once I zoom in to see, like, hey, wait a minute. That's the Dozier car. That's not the uh, Eagle Eye. Car. So, yeah. So, anyway. <clears throat> Eagle Reeves does Eye describe. Juan over here. <laughs> World's greatest detective. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Reeves writes, quote, the look should suggest that they are just beginning to prepare the cave as a headquarters for Bruce. Stairs are roughly carved from rock, electric bulbs strung on wires, and Alfred overtakes Batman as the latter approaches the first version of the Batmobile, which is not the one we traditionally know. But, as you might remember from the episode The Mechanic, the BTS Batmobile was originally with the classic Bathead battering ram in the front and looked like a very old-school 1940s And I forgot uh, all about that. Car. Yeah, it's from the episode The Mechanic, where... Batman shows up with this car that is like run down. He's like, I need your help to uh, the mechanic Earl Cooper. And Earl Cooper is the one who creates the classic mm -hmm. BTAS Batmobile that we know until Penguin takes it over and they basically no do the hunchback BTAS version. in the animated series. <laughs> There's no Herald. No, no Herald. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or Lucius making it because Lucius has no idea Bruce is Batman in, in this version. So uh, this is a scene with the Batmobile. And Alfred is talking to Batman about this. And Alfred is refusing to be an enabler to Batman. So we have this image here from Robin's Reckoning where Bruce is wearing the, uh, the classic flashback suit. But Alfred brings up that he cannot stand by and let Bruce do this. He made a promise to watch over Bruce as a child. And now Bruce is an adult and he insists on endangering himself. So Alfred tenders his res resignation. Hmm. So this is a major moment and not something that we expect hmm. or I expected but we would expect from the, you know, the DCAU Alfred and stuff because we haven't seen this. But again, this is, this is a flashback. This is a, this is a prequel type of thing. So it makes a lot of sense. This is a very Alfred-centered episode, as you can tell on this. So it makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense here that Alfred is sort of refusing to enable this and he tenders his re resignation and Batman, quote, stares at him for a long moment and then says, do what you have to do and then <laughs> takes off in the Batmobile. So <clears throat> he is uh -huh. so determined to beat the shit out of criminals, that he will say goodbye to his surrogate father in that moment and continue. So, <clears throat> shame. In present day, Leslie calls Alfred from the phone on the Robin cycle, telling him to have Bruce hold on just a moment longer. Batman, however, passes out in the sick bay, and Alfred shakes him, yelling that he's got to wake up before we cut to commercial. Okay. And I think that's a good opportunity for us oh, damn. to cut to a commercial. Nice. It's time to tap in with the HyperX Quadcast S microphone. The stunning HyperX Quadcast S features dynamic, customizable RGB lighting, a convenient tap to mute sensor, and four selectable polar patterns, so it can broadcast crystal clear audio, whether you're gaming, streaming, podcasting, or impressing your remote colleagues and classmates. So what are you waiting for? Join the Quad Squad and tap in today with the HyperX Quadcast S microphone. In. What can I get you? Sure, I've heard of Hair of the Dogcast. They're that podcast about video games and beer. From the latest gaming headlines to diving deep into the games of yesterday to sampling and reviewing craft beer from all over the world, Hair of the Dogcast is here for the gamer and beer lover in all of us. Available weekly on the Greenlit Podcast Network. Take a time machine back to before the world went to hell around the year 2000. The 80s and 90s were so rad. The movies, the music, the TV, the games? That's what I want to talk about. If you're cool enough, join us and listen to Less Than 2000, because that's all we talk about. Adam and Chad live Less Than 2000. Lord have mercy, y'all. 
Do you like hounds? Do you enjoy pooches? Do you find yourself enjoying time spent with that of canines? Talking about dogs, y'all. As you might have heard, Superhero Stuff You Should Know has now teamed up with BarkBox. For every month, you get a box for your special canine. Pooches. Or hounds. That's right. One free extra month if you go to BarkBox.com slash Superhero Stuff Pod. Follow the link and you'll get a free extra month valued at $35 and valid for all multi-length plans. So get the BarkBox for your hound, for your pooch, for your canine. Your doggo will thank you. And we are back. Is Batman going to die from the poison? Unlikely, because we got a whole other show to go. But still, <laughs> that's what <laughs> they try to make. die in like, this? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that would have changed the rest of the DCAU. There's no Superman team up. There's no Re- Reeves is like, I got an idea. <laughs> we kill Batman. <laughs> we kill- poison <laughs> Ivy murders the fuck out of him. <laughs> <laughs> it is strange that there is no specification on who poisoned Batman. It just mm-hmm. says that he was poisoned. Um, oh, I just assumed we were going to get to a Poison Ivy reveal. I would think so, too. Or Scarecrow. Like, either one oh, of those. Oh, yeah, one Joker. of the two. Yeah, yeah that's any, true. Yeah. Any of those. Uh, you would think that Batman's clue to Alfred would have been the name of the villain who poisoned him. Yeah. In which case, Alfred can just be like, all right, let me just get the, the Scarecrow antidote or something. But maybe, honestly, maybe it's just just a just a hood. Maybe it's actually not maybe any of the Rogue's Gallery members. It was Baby Doll. Okay, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Roxy Rocket, or whoever the fuck it is. <laughs> hey, Roxy Rocket wasn't even around at this point. I think she just showed up in the new adventures. In the new version. If I'm not mistaken. Her yeah, debut so, uh, was I'm Poisoning it's Batman. Baby Doll. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, other than the speculation on who poisoned Batman, what do you guys think of this episode so far? I'll start with Rodney. <clears throat> Hmm. A.K.A. Zach. I, I do <laughs> he forgot his name. Like it. I do. I do <laughs> like it. Um, I I don't know if I love it though. I feel like I hmm. could have I could have seen maybe uh, a little bit of an action piece at the beginning of Who Poisoned Batman, or maybe hmm. even it could be a mystery. Like you see something happening to Batman before all this starts, and. Uh, and you're going to continue with the episode, so I might hold off on this, but I will say, like, maybe I, I would have liked some more flashbacks that are incorporating Alfred's relationship with Bruce, since it seems to mm. be a very Alfred-centric episode where yeah. he's talking to Bruce to keep him from, uh, you know, going unconscious. I feel like maybe it could have been a little bit more, um, I guess, like, of a tender moment where we see more flashbacks of of maybe Bruce when he's younger, and then you can get to the point where Alfred is... You see how the relationship changes when Bruce is an adult and Alfred is having sure. to confront him about his current choices. Sorry, true. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I think those two things might, would be a, a good addition. But overall, this is an episode I would have loved to have seen as a kid because I, mm-hmm. I always like seeing the Robin's Reckoning episode and any origin stuff like that is cool to me. Yeah. And Druvius. Yeah, I think <clears throat> it's funny you say that. I like I like origin stories too, but I feel like they're kind of polarizing. Some pe- it, like people love them or hate them, mm-hmm. you know. Like some directors, like what, what like what we found out is that they, <clears throat> you know, want to skip over the origin story because they don't give a fuck, you know. Mm-hmm. But then other other people want to go over it. And uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I like I like the origin stories as well. As for this one, I'm liking it. Um, my main thing now is like I love the. The poison, like I've been poisoned, he wrecks his car. Great mm-hmm. setup. But mm-hmm. I guess we'll get to it now. But like I need Batman and or Robin or somebody on the case of who poisoned him. Like, <laughs> I know. We haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> and I need to get there now. Well, okay. Unfortunately, there is no answer to that. In well, I what the, the fuck end. are we doing ah! then? All right. Well, that's the end of the episode. That is superhero stuff. <laughs> no. Woo! Whisper of the day. Get your, get your whisker box. Get their bark box. Over. It was whisper of a day all along. <laughs> Batman dies and that's Robin's not a good poisoned. enough detective to figure out who it is. So that's the end of the Batman saga. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Bidet. So we have this we have this fucking <laughs> intro and we don't address the fucking poison again. I think the poison is not. You know, it's one of those things where it's like, it's not about the poison, it's about the relationship of Alfred and Batman. You know, like, it's, I, I get it though. I think ideally, right? 
we start off with the action sequence that Zach is talking about, where it's like up him up against, you know, Scarecrow, and Scarecrow's got like a new toxin type of thing that'll like kill him, and so, that type of thing. And and then Batman still has to go forward and save somebody. Scarecrow inoculates him with the gas or poison, whoever it is, and then Batman's poisoned, and then we get the whole thing where the Batmobile crashes and Alfred has to take care of him. Robin's on the case, brings Leslie over, and then Robin now has to encounter Scarecrow or something as Leslie's treating Batman, and then Batman now as well, of course. You know, I'm not giving any spoilers and saying that Batman's going to get cured of this. Um, But Batman does end up, uh, you know, getting out of the sick bay, waking himself out of the bed, pulling himself out of bed, and despite Leslie and Alfred's, like, you know, protesting he ends up joining dick out in the field and takes down scarecrow once and for mm-hmm. all and then gets to come back home to the bat cave to sort of have a happy family reunion with alfred and leslie it's kind of the more fleshed out version i think of this but yeah. uh I, okay i do think at least one of the things that you guys brought up is addressed here which is the alfred and batman relationship because as you said zach there is there hasn't really been a ton uh, of it outside of just like, I remember this, I remember this, I remember this yeah. from Alfred, but not necessarily that much of a dramatic scene with the two of them until we got to Alfred saying, I'm resigning, I'm out. Right. So now the big question is, what brought Alfred back? We already know he comes back. We know that, that you know, Bruce becomes Batman and continues on in his career, and we know that he's going to, you know, probably survive this because we've got a whole other season and many other spinoffs to go of <laughs> what happens. Right. Uh, so we get back from commercials, and Robin is able to revive Batman by yelling at him over the phone to wake up. <laughs> that <laughs> like, works. We don't get a Batman Beyond <laughs> if you die now. The poison has exited your system, Master Wayne, Master Bruce. <laughs> so Alfred then tries to keep Bruce awake further by making him remember his first night out as Batman. So we have the flashback to Batman's first night in the DCAU. So here he is in the flashback suit that we talked about last time. Uh, but we see a montage of Batman's first night, and it says that he's, quote, busting up a mugging, stopping a robbery, preventing a carjacking, j- carjacking, a shadowy Avenger who appears out of the night and then vanishes the second his job is done. Back at Wayne Manor, Alfred is packing his bags as he watches the news, and the news is spreading about this mysterious bat vigilante. There's an interview with a patrolman named Bullock talking about how this Batman seems like he's out of control. And then we have a... <laughs> We have a red-haired Gordon <laughs> saying, like, I'm glad he's on our side. So we have, like, little cameos. He um, stinks, and versions. I don't like him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's Bullock's thing. So, yep. um, meanwhile, I'm sure that Alfred has the black hair that he had in the Phantasm flashbacks, mm-hmm. as I'm showing in the concept art I'm pulling here, also from Batman The Complete History by Les Daniels, not the Farrago book. Um, it might also <laughs> be another book that's out of print. I don't know. I haven't looked oh. it up. Rare smile of Bruce and the cowl. Yeah, that's true. They yeah. say Batman doesn't smile. So, uh, in the script treatment, Alfred is still packing from Wayne Manor. He's going to leave. He already tendered his resignation. He's looking at all the the news about Bruce's, you know, crazy adventure. And he, we notice that he's packing all these old theater props from his thespian days. So it does keep the backstory of him having been an actor at some point. Uh, and it says that included among the props is a prop pistol. So that's going to come uh, later on. But we then cut to the next crime that Batman's going to stop, which is at a chemical plant where gangsters are knocking off a safe in the payroll office. Now, this is not identified as Ace Chemicals, and unfortunately, Zach, there's nothing in here about a criminal falling into a vet to become the Joker. So we'll just have to think that that happened. Either that happens another time, or Reeves didn't specify that this was going to happen, that maybe Jack Napier goes over to... Europe or wherever the Beaumonts were hiding out, kills Carl Beaumont, comes back, becomes part of this chemical plant, just happens to be on Batman's first night out, and then just takes a dunk into the chemical vat. So, Dang. who knows? It does say, though, that it's Batman making the goes rounds after that first night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it says that he, quote, takes out the crooks one by one, swinging from catwalks over roiling vats of chemicals, sending batterings flying. Ricocheting bullets, sparks, and flammable chemicals cause a fire to start. Fire alarms are tripped. So... Batman's a little reckless in here. He started a fire uh, on this, but he's getting shit done. You know, it's his first night out. You know, <laughs> Bill Bill took took down Falcone, uh, and that was still impressive. But this guy's doing like you know he's on his like twentieth crime to stop for that night. So yeah. uh, back at Wayne Manor, Alfred sees footage of Batman 
uh, well, of the chemical plant and, like, you know, the shadows of, of Batman and stuff being there. And it says, quote, emotions war in Alfred's face, finally giving way to grim resolve as he opens one of the suitcases, taking something unseen from it, and then races out. I wonder what that is. So, Alfred races over towards the area as Batman chases the last remaining crook from the chemical plant in an alley. And the crook screams, who are you? And Batman says, vengeance. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Something in the way. So, yeah. <laughs> it does actually say vengeance in the script. Batman is that Kurt Cobain crook. right there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Batman punches the Kurt crook Cobain. as Alfred runs to the alley, seeing Batman bring his fist back to deliver the final blow. And to stop him, Alfred pulls out the prop pistol from his theater days and fires a blank in the air. Batman sees Alfred, who in the narration says, quote, it was all I needed to get your attention. The years of training and preparation were finally over, ended as they began, in an alley with the sound of a gun. Oh, shit. Very poetic, yeah. So... Batman goes to Alfred and asks, another lecture. And Alfred shakes his head and brings up that he could never replace Thomas Wayne as his father. And Batman asks, then what are you, Alfred? And Alfred responds, what I have been all these years, I am the help. And <laughs> Batman says, then help me to grieve. And the two embrace. And that's the end of the flashback. Damn. Yeah, I know, right? Michael Reeves just bringing mm. it. So we cut to oh, present man, day. Stuff like this, you think about like when we watched <laughs> BTAS and we were kids, we were watching yeah. poetry. I, I mean, know, this right? one wasn't made, but like the, the ones that we did that were made that we did watch, <laughs> it's like, fuck, we were lucky little kids, yeah. weren't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we cut back to present day with the dying Batman as Alfred tells him that while he can't replace Thomas as his father, quote, you became someone that any man would be proud to have for a son. As he does this, he realizes that Bruce's heart has stopped. So we get the classic cliche, cliched scene of he starts pounding on Batman's chest and doing CPR and yelling at Bruce to live. And finally, Batman opens his eyes and is revived enough just, for Les just in time for Leslie and Robin to arrive. Leslie, Leslie says, Bruce. you are still poisoned. <laughs> <laughs> get that shit checked. <laughs> you aren't getting on this case? <laughs> My God, Bruce. <laughs> yeah, she's the reason why Bruce has his attitude, not Alfred. <laughs> so Leslie examines Bruce and gives him the antidote, then tells Alfred that he'll live. And Alfred tells her she's going to have to find someone else for those tickets to Barbados, saying, quote, my place is here, as he stands by Batman's bedside. Fade out. Hmm. And that's the unmade origin of Batman hmm. for Batman the Unmade series. What did you guys think? Rodney. <laughs> Rodney Zach. Hmm. Well, Rodney. I will say Rodney that Rocket. I, I stand by what I already said about my thoughts. <laughs> I do think that that was it. I liked seeing Alfred uh, become part of the action within a flashback. So mm -hmm. that was really cool to see. I, I like that part a lot, and um, I think that was a heartfelt moment that was included with him embracing and, uh, you know, him calling him, uh, basically saying, like, anybody would be proud to have you as a son. All that stuff, I think, is really important. Uh, but I do mm -hmm. stand by what I said earlier, whereas there should have been some action uh, bookends to the episode that could mm -hmm. also, even if you didn't want to make it a mystery who the, who the uh, villain was that poisoned it, because... I agree, like, in the end, it doesn't really matter. That's not the important part of the story. Right. But I do think if you were, you know, a kid watching this, you would, you kind of want to sandwich it with the uh, action on both ends uh, to mm -hmm. kind of finish out the story. And um, then you got, like, the action with Rob in the middle. So I would still add that. And I, and I think I still yeah. would add maybe a little bit more, one or two flashbacks quickly, maybe, of Alfred with Bruce when he was like really young, uh, yeah. maybe just so you could see their relationship change throughout Bruce's lifetime and then his career mm -hmm. as Batman. But overall, yeah. it's a really cool episode. I think the only thing about it, um, is that it seems to, I, I don't know if it's, if I feel like it's stepping on the toes of mask of the phantasm or if it really is fleshing it out, especially with that, uh, reuse of the scene and addition to it it's kind of cool mm -hmm. but also like 
I feel like you do get a lot of Batman's origin in Mask of the Phantasm, so right. it's interesting. I like to focus on Alfred and his relationship with Bruce, so mm-hmm. I don't know. Could still use a little punching up, but I did. A, I do like it and yeah. all. <laughs> <laughs> it is a you know it only exists as the script treatment, so presumably there would have been more oh, you know, rewrites okay, yeah. and additions to that type of stuff. But we're just judging it as it is. Yeah. Andruvius. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it yeah it's less. I mean, there's Batman origin stuff in it, but all, a lot of that what ninety percent of it or more is from Mask of the Phantasm, right? A lot of the origin stuff. It's ma- well, I don't know. Anyway, it's mo- mainly more. It seems to be more about Alfred than it is about Batman's origin, which is cool. Mm-hmm. The way it ends is nice, very heartfelt. This would have been one of the better episodes, probably. I mean, if this yeah. is just a treatment, then it was hopefully mm-hmm. on- only up from there, you know. So, uh, I mean, yeah, this is probably would have been one of the better ones. It probably shed a tear as a kid eating your cereal. Yeah. Uh, yes. you know, watching this shit <laughs> or as an adult, <laughs> you know, so, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. um, I'm, we were in the hands of the guy that wrote Vita Clay. So, yeah. so there's that, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's not a whole lot to go on other than that. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, again, I wish that, I guess the, I thought the setup was so good and we just, I, you know, I guess the poison is yeah, just not that big of a deal after that, but. Mm-hmm. I get it. I mean, I get it now that I hear the whole thing. So, um, yeah, it's fine. It was good. Yeah. Would have been nice to have those bookends. But, yeah, I think if they added that and they made this, then this this would definitely be one of our favorite ones, I think. Like, it would be mm-hmm. one of the S-tier ones, as opposed, as we've joked about, as opposed to the A-tiers the A uh, on this. The so. lowest of the low, <laughs> the A. Yeah. For b yeah. What would you say, Critters or something? Yeah, we, was we're, one of the we're, worst okay, ones. We're critter. going, like... Go ahead. Oh, so Critters yeah. is, I think, uh, popularly the like least favorite episode of just about everybody. Yeah. It's definitely the weirdest mm-hmm. one, but um, the one that another one that everybody dislikes is uh, I've got Batman in, in my basement. The one with the kids <laughs> oh, yeah. and the penguin. It's just uh, yeah, it's kind of hokey, but I still like it. Mm-hmm. I've got Batman in my basement or Critters. Both. You like both. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was expecting that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that is the Unmade Batman origin from Michael Reeves, and uh, that is superhero stuff you should know. You know what? They can't all be two Better hours, Better guys. Yes, you know, exactly. we get you in and out on this one this yeah. week. Big thanks to our research assistant, Dan, for the visuals on this, as well as these images that did not make it into the BTS concept art episode. So we've got uh, all the stuff that seems to be from a style guide of the main models. Obviously, a lot of the stuff is very close to what we ended up seeing, so that's why I didn't really include it into the actual episode, because I'm just like, yeah, this is pretty much what we got, you know? And then uh, we even have some looks at some props and stuff. We're looking at the Thomas and Martha Wayne photo. We're looking at uh, a newspaper uh, and uh, the Gotham police declaring war on Batman. This looks like it's from uh, On Leather Wings. So it's talking about a giant bat mm-hmm. injuring the Night Watchman. I don't even uh, think about props with animation. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's interesting. Wild, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the bats in the cage. So yeah, some of these come from the early episodes. We're looking at Christmas with the joke, uh, Christmas with the Joker uh, ones mm-hmm. as well. Um, tiny tunes. I like tiny the tunes. Tunes. <laughs> little tiny tunes Easter egg. That's cool, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got a cop here. We've got more bats for the Bat Cave. Um, so, yeah, all sorts of different other characters as well. Again, from Nothing to Fear, we've got the, the character uh, Afraid of the Rats. So, uh, kind of cool to see a lot of the behind the scenes stuff, the props and all that. Uh, and then this Joker, uh, this Joker guy as well. <laughs> so, that's cool. Uh, the Nothing to Fear skeleton. Oh, that uh, wouldn't have made it. Yeah. I just feel that's too cool. It's no, too... It's, in, it's in it's in the movie. I mean, it did make the, it the episode. Oh, yeah, it this is? is Nothing to Fear. This is when he he oh, tells. Shit. This is when he says, you know, I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman. Oh fuck! This I gotta do. Skeleton. I gotta do a rewatch, guys. It's been years since I've seen HBO some Max. Of these. Yeah, I know. Thank God for HBO HBO Max. Max. episode. They have all the animated Batman shows. I'm like Jesus. I would have killed for this as a kid. I'm trying to <laughs> trying to cut down the DVDs for all this stuff. And then I can just click it. You would have lost your mind. <laughs> just sat That's in funny, front man. of the yeah, sat in front of the computer all day, just watching each one. 
And so Ben Juan died. <laughs> Child <laughs> obituary. Oh, man, that got dark. Anyway. <laughs> Christopher the Joker, Peter Clay stuff. Uh, but yeah, a lot of style guide stuff uh, on this one. Thanks nice. to Dave on this Rene Montoya. Um, nice, nice. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and we also have some other style guide stuff. Thanks to Logan Wood. Logan Wood sent us these from the style guide of Batman 89. Oh, that's a lot of awesome. art by Jerry Ordway. Damn, the these Jack are Nicholson cool. Joker. Yeah, this looks like it comes from the um, comic adaptation, the art. You know, there wasn't, was there, a, there wasn't like a lot of promotional material with Love That Joker on it, was there? Not I that feel I like remember. that's... Surprisingly, yeah. no. Yeah. That's like prime, you know, like uh, yeah. pickings or whatever. <laughs> prime pickings. There's a lot of different lines here on it. So you've yeah. got like, Jack's dead, my friend. You can call me... Joker, um, you know, <laughs> little song, little dance, Batman's head on a lance, like that's. Oh all. yeah, these that's are great too. Yeah, uh, nice outfit. We've got his whole poem that he says to Vicky before he, you know, walks out of her apartment <laughs> on the right here. Uh, we've got the giant pistol that he uses to shoot down the Batwing. So, yeah. yeah, all sorts of stuff. And these then of cool. course, where does he get those wonderful toys on the bottom? That's a good one. Love that Joker's <laughs> like so good for poster though, like a tagline. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, those are the post credits. If well, only there was a T-shirt extend. that had it on it. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Ideas, yes. I wonder. <laughs> All right. Yes. I think now is time for the Joker's fireside chat. And it's that time again, kids, for another Joker's fireside chats. Whoo-wee. Somebody's been writing a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed this is a trend lately. We get lo- long comments. We're getting longer ones, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's all right. There's <laughs> just more for me to talk. Look, we're here again, kiddies. Joker's fireside chat. Everybody settle down. <laughs> Shut up, you in the back. <laughs> all right. This one comes from Little Camden. Little Camden writes, Dear Uncle Joker, Excellent compilation of material in this video and in the concept art video. I've been conducting my own research regarding Warren Scarron's contributions to the screenplay and found out some interesting bits that didn't survive in the final film or screenplay for that matter. I can confirm that at one point the Joker, that's me, was going to be responsible <laughs> for both the murder of the Graysons and the Wayans. They even wanted Wayans. to add flashes of Batman <laughs> recognizing Jack Napier before he dropped him into the chemicals, which has been a popular theory for years. There was also an attempt at explaining why Bruce Wayne doesn't have much of a record. He was said to have been doing his world traveling and would only occasionally return to Gotham City, only to leave due to the trauma he suffered. It's only now that he's Batman that keeps him from leaving again. Ooh, that was a long letter. Some of you (laughs) fell asleep in the back. Wake up! (laughs) I'm awake. I'm awake. (sighs) What was that again? You're going to have to repeat that. Snap out of it. (laughs) (laughs) Snap out of it. Well, <laughs> thank you, Cam. And this yeah. was this was thank responding you, to our video, uh, yes, of rare storyboards and photos uh, from the Batman '89 deleted scenes. Yes, yes. So, thank you, Camden, for that uh, for that comment. I'd be curious to see, um, you know, where you read uh, this stuff. I know that there is a Warren Scarin interview uh, magazine scan online. It's been a while since I've reread it, so maybe it comes from there. I do think it would have been overkill if the Joker killed. You know, was responsible for both the murder of the Graysons and the murder of the Waynes in the same story. Yeah, just, I feel like it's it's one or the other. <laughs> like, it's it's kill them all. Coincidental as it is, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I do like the idea of the flashbacks of of, of uh, Batman recognizing Jack Napier before dropping him into the chemicals. In terms of just like, mm-hmm. did he slip from you know, in terms of the glove stuff, or did Batman deliberately drop him, you know, because he recognized him? I you know that's kind of been a popular theory as. Um, as Camden's pointed it's out. And then there's ambiguous. also kind of this cool yeah. thing. Yeah. There's also this kind of cool thing here about the whole, like, Batman's the only thing keeping him in Gotham. The only way that he's able to stay there. So that's pretty cool. 
on this. So hmm. thank yeah. you very much, Camden. As you guys have noticed, the Fireside thank Chat you. has now sort of expanded to, uh, yeah, to, has expanded to people who have been adding some more tidbits to our stuff. So yeah, uh, yeah. That means more reading for you, I'm afraid, Mr. Joker. So <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> all right, everybody, settle down. Here's another. Uh, this is uh, from little Lisa Jackson. Uh, little Lisa writes, Dear Uncle Joker, your breath stinks. Thanks, Lisa. <laughs> Here's something very interesting. <laughs> Anton and Nigel couldn't work on Batman Returns because that ass dick, I don't know, four letters, because that dick, John Peters convinced Anton first to sign an ironclad contract with Columbia Pictures after he took the helm in late 1989. Peters called first for Bat... Oh, excuse me. I gotta slow down. Peters promised him he could direct Nigel... Peters promised him he could direct. Nigel was an employee of First. So when Burton called First for Batman Returns, Peters and Columbia said, Hell no! And Nigel couldn't do it either because he was an employee of First. So Burton called Bo Welch, the husband of Catherine O'Hara, co-star of Beetlejuice. That was very informative, little Lisa. Mm-hmm. Yes. Thank you. Ben, have you heard this before? Not really. I mean, I I do think there is. I mean, I didn't really look into why Anton First was not brought back for Batman Returns before, but it does make a lot of sense that it would be for like legal or contractual reasons on something like that because the dude won an Oscar for the Gotham right, in right. Batman eighty nine. Yeah. So there's that part of it, and like even though I know Burton was like, no, we're just going to film this here as opposed to going to Pinewood again. Um, they could have mm-hmm. easily like found some way to just ship that stuff back over to Burbank or something right, like right, that. Right. You know, like it, they, they would have found a way to, to keep it. So if it's because of this, I'm just like, all right, I, I haven't heard this before. I'd have to sort of look more into it, but I buy it. You know, I buy that it was some weird contractual reason why he wasn't back because of the fact that like his, mm-hmm. his claim to fame, he won the Oscar. This is the big thing that, that they wanted for the, the first movie. So to sort of get rid of that, had to have been some other reason. It couldn't have just been, you know, like it, it's it's such a big part of eighty nine. Either this was said in an interview somewhere, mm-hmm. or our listeners are insiders. Yes. <laughs> Thank so, you for hmm. leaking info to yes, us. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, and then we have one more for the fireside chat, which is a lot shorter of a note, by the way, Mister Joker. But it's a shorter note that actually came Thank through to goodness. us. Uh, and the contact form for our website from Rick. (laughs) All right. (laughs) And here, kitties, is our last letter I can see your eyes glazing over. Either you're getting tired or maybe that's the gas kicking in. Who knows? So, this is from little Rick A. Rick A. from Gotham City writes, Dear Uncle Joker, Hey, guys. Check out this Batman 89 storyboard for a knock. I think that's supposed to be Knox crash so, yeah. scene on eBay. <laughs> Big fan of your content, especially the Joker fireside chats. That's <laughs> not what he said. Especially <laughs> Batman <what> related <laughs> 19 <laughs> Especially Batman related 1989 specifically. Much kudos to you all. Thank you, <laughs> what Rick. Is- a? <laughs> thank, thank you, Rick. A. What if somebody? What if there's listeners out there that skip to this part? <laughs> That'd be crazy, man. <laughs> Fuck that concept design. I want to hear that jackass speak in a fucking Joker accent. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> oh shit, man. Thanks, Rick, for Ooh. this. I hadn't seen this before, but yeah, yes. this. Uh, it is. Cool. Knox's car is really fucked up. Look at that. Yeah, I saw this is being sold on eBay, man. Like I, or it was. I, I, I looked at that. What was it like three hundred bucks or something? It wasn't too too insane, but yeah, I wasn't gonna buy it either. At the same I time, I th- just put, having it in a slide is enough. I think for me, yeah, mm-hmm. putting it on the show. We have honored. Yeah. It. Want to? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Rick A, and thank you, Joker. 
for this fireside chat. And that was Uncle Joker's Fireside Chats. Superhero Stuff You Should Know is a part of the HyperX Podcast Network. HyperX is our sponsor and the maker of the acclaimed Quadcast and Quadcast S microphones. Quadcast USB mics look and sound amazing, and they're packed with features. With four selectable polar patterns, you'll get great sound no matter what you're recording. The included shock mount and pop filter mean you won't have to shell out extra cash for a great setup. Then there's the eye-catching LED indicator and tap-to-mute sensor, so you can tap in and tap out to stop broadcast accident. It's time for you to tap in with the HyperX Quadcast and Quadcast S. Oh, man, we made it again, everybody. Mm-hmm. So, thank you for those comments, and thank you to our Patreon supporters, which include Shasta, Leom O, Super Inframan, Douglas P, Dan D, Aaron Willett, Nick Noach, Jeffrey R, Asger's Web, Jeremy H, Alex of the What Mean Podcast, Ian Justice, Jared P, Jeremy, uh, Jamie H, Rochelle L, Matthew B, Skyler T D, Sketchcraft, Braxton W, Renee V, J D, and Logan Wood, who is Shane Helms one two one on Instagram. And we have our other supporters who are Sparkageddon, SECT Productions, Robert Schumann, Sh- Kuki Noms, Matt Herring, Elijah B., Shamrock Balls, Ian H., Walter the Wobot, John Wells, Rye Guy, Jackson Putnam, Tway N., and Watson, Stage Bat on Instagram, and then Joey, who is at W.media on Instagram. And we got the Shasta Army on Instagram. Patreon, uh, that's the $1 tier. Go to patreon.com slash superhero stuff pod. And that's the $1 tier. We also have the $5 tier. That's a whole other show. We brought it up a couple times already in this episode. Uh, that's, a, that's a whole other show. More content from us and more deep dives and some review stuff and um, a tiny bit of shooting the shit, but we mostly stay on target. Mm. <laughs> ben, why do you got to do so many tangents, mostly. man? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, cancel cancel anytime. It's a five dollar tier tier. It's all it's it's about a dollar an episode or or under a dollar actually probably. Um uh so yeah, yeah. <laughs> my math ain't too good. Um anyway we're also we're also doing a countdown to the Batman type of thing. So comic book history stuff, stuff that's related to the upcoming Batman movie, that stuff is being done in the Patreon so that we can continue doing the unmade concept art and unmade movie, unmade T V episode type stuff here for the main show. Okay, yeah. Dude, after studying Japanese after college, my, my math, by the way, went fucking way down, and my language sector in my brain is still good. Anyway, join the $10 <laughs> tier, a uh, monthly mo- uh, a live show that gives you the uh, $1 and $5 tier benefits, but it also lets you join the monthly meetup. That's where you can interact with us, shoot the shit, and we go over a normally a Batman-related topic all mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, um, please join that. And then uh, the re- <laughs> we we've made it to this part, <laughs> my favorite part. <laughs> Superhero stuff pod merch on superhousepod.redbubble.com and superhero stuff pod.threadless.com. And if you can see, do we have the fucking uh, clip here? Yeah, here we go. Look at him. We made it, guys. I contacted Stefan. He came through. <laughs> we have the new art up. Now you can get your Ben Man, your Indeed Wizard, and your Jokula. Or let's just say Dracula. Zacula. <laughs> your Zacula art <laughs> on these stores. All God, right. Looks like Zach of Lipstick. God. Yes. <laughs> I am that so- white in real life. Fingernails that long too. He's a little too tan, man, (laughs) for you. (laughs) I can't believe it's finally arrived. We're here. (laughs) So, uh, Zacula, you've made it. It's only taken this long. (laughs) It took a year and a half. I'd like to make a speech. No. (laughs) (laughs) You make a speech, then we play the. uh, The uh, walk-off music or whatever, as yeah. soon as you start talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get the hook. Okay. Uh, just like uh, Alex of the What Mean Podcast did last week, uh, please send us some audio to superhousepodcast at gmail.com. It doesn't have to be wh- exactly what he did. It can be really anything. Generally in other shows, like um, Astonishing Legends is a good example. 
Astonishing Legends is a good, like, not conspiracy theory, but, like, um, cryptids and, like, high strangeness, that like, that kind of podcast. Um, they have, like, their listeners send in, they're just, like, uh, you know, you're now listening to Astonishing Legends, you know. So, it's like, if you want to do, you're now listening to Superhouse Pod, or Superhero Stuff You Should Know, uh, even that is cool, you know. So, yeah. Or anything. Just send anything. Mm-hmm. doesn't matter. Superhouse Podcast at gmail.com. I'm Thunderwolf Drew on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Thunderwolf Lives on YouTube. ThunderwolfDrew.com is my portfolio. Amanorecon.com. It's A-M-A-N-O-R-E-C-O-N.com. Uh, this is a personal project. This poster is by uh, Zach. Awesome poster. Uh, think an R-rated Power Rangers meets X-Files. That's, a, that's the quickest pitch I can do for it. We have shot something. We need to shoot one more day. And um, more on that in the future. It's going to be an Indiegogo campaign. And uh, not a fan film. It's original. Anyway, Ben. Shout out to Comic Capital on Instagram for your support, as well as the Everything Entertainment Club on Clubhouse. You can follow us on social media on Twitter at SuperHousePod. Uh, Instagram at Superhero Stuff Pod. TikTok, Superhero Stuff Pod. Vero, Superhero Stuff Pod. My website is benwantrider.com, where you can read my Gotham script, Gotham Vampire, where young Bruce faces off against the Mad Monk, as well as my spec script for Elementary called The Death of Sherlock Holmes, a modern update on the classic story, The Adventure of the Dying Detective. And very soon there will be the Curb Your Enthusiasm spec that I'll put up where Larry David goes to Disneyland. So. Dude, I do. I do. <laughs> I want to read this one. I really do. Okay. It's very cool. I mean, <laughs> I've read your other Gotham scripts way back in the day. Mm hmm. And I want to read this curb one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's oh, if you want, very different. If you want to curb your enthusiasm <laughs> episode, <laughs> Ben and I can also do that. So, cur- yes. cur- Cobra yeah. Kai and curb your enthusiasm, <laughs> we can totally talk about those two. Yes. So, <laughs> Let us know. <laughs> totally different fucking shows. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Uh, my YouTube channel is in the description below where you can also check out my uh, Doctor Who, The Ronin of Time, an audio drama I write, narrate, and edit where the eighth Doctor meets Miyamoto Musashi in ancient Japan. Uh, my personal Instagram is Ben Juan Ryder, my cat's Instagram is Alfie Pennyworth Cat. And if you have an Alfie or your own cat, then you can get the Whisker Box, the only cat box with Crazy Cat Lady or Gent. And if you have a, if you have a dog instead of a cat, that's okay too. Because or in you get addition the to. Or in addition to as yeah. uh, other people have, then you can get the bark box, y'all. So that is to give your dog exactly what they want, as it says there, which is apparently a whole box full of treats and goodies. So you can use our promo link, and you can get the first month off free, valued at $35, and you can get all sorts of shit over at SuperheroStuffPod.com slash shop, where you can if you, use sorry. Amazon affiliate links as well. Go ahead. If you don't get the bark box, can it be said that you even love your dog? <laughs> exactly. Yes. You know, I mean, it's I question actually a it. form of neglect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Not getting the bark box, and they, and they told us to say this, is like leaving your dog in a car with the windows up. <laughs> in the middle of summer. <laughs> actually, no, they did not. I'm going to say right now, they did not tell us to say that. <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> just gonna, I don't want them mad at us. So you better get the bark <laughs> box or else. <laughs> They stopped playing that uh, commercial in the, in the middle. With no bark? Yes. I don't like that. That was something yeah. I look forward to every time I listen to the episode. Mm. No, yeah, it's... It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> it's staying in there. It's in there. We're, we're, okay. we're maintaining our relationship with, with the Bark Box okay, Corporation. Good. Yeah, yeah. All with right. Big Bark Box, we, uh, we're, we're shills for Big Bark Box. Yes, exactly. It's true. <laughs> All right, over to Zach. <laughs> well, if you're still awake at this point or you haven't turned off the video yet, <laughs> yeah, you can check out... <laughs> click. <laughs> you can check oh, out my box. artwork. Fuck Zach stuff. You know, <laughs> they're like, Bark Box, I'm, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> All I want to hear is that fucking bark and I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, uh, you can check out my artwork. Just go to ZacharyJacksonBrownArt.com like some of you have and... Uh, had some people buy some t-shirts and some prints, the fans of the show, so that was pretty cool. And uh, you can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok, YouTube. I haven't done anything there in a while, but it's all Zachary Jackson Brown art. 
And uh, we did. I did actually have a fan, Ben, uh, ask if they could get the Batman that was on the um, our episode about the Batman eighty four script. Was that it with Michael? The Engelhart one. The, the Engelhart script. Yeah, yeah, somebody. Yeah. yeah, yeah, somebody wants to get that tattooed on him. So that'll be pretty cool if that oh, happens. Shit. Damn. Yeah, damn. A, All right. We'll send put us a, a picture. picture of it up. Yeah. Yeah. Send us a picture. We'll include it in the fireside chat. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's it crazy. for me. Yeah. Awesome. Well, <clears throat> we would like for you to do us a favor. I want you to tell all your friends about us. Where you've been spending your nights. Mm-hmm.